Hey guys, G here at the House of Black Dragon Society. So, those of you who've been asking, G, what's that EDC we were just mentioning on the last video? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this is the moment for you guys to laugh your head off, okay? Those of you from South Africa, you know exactly what I'm holding in my hand. Those of you who don't, say hello to a copy. <laughs> This particular copy is not even actually the real thing. That's a sad thing, all right? I picked this up a while back. Actually, it is a fake copy. Most likely from China or Pakistan. In my defense, I didn't know any better regarding the copies back when I picked this up. So it's only after I found out because actual copies does not have this kind of grind. And it came at as sharp as a goddamn butter knife. So I have my good friend Daniel Malley of Epicurean Edges. Shout out to Daniel. And he grinded this razor sharp for me and I absolutely love it. So this is my EDC. Now, just from the outside look of this, some of you might think that, oh, that's probably like the ring knife and also very much like a Navaja. Wrong. So this ring and this lock this is the difference between the fakes and the actual real ones. I actually had, right after I got this one, I got an actual real copy to see the difference. The real ones don't do this as easy. This is the fake, watch. A little bit of pressure and basically it closes on itself. So, gee, aren't you risking your fingers when you're using this? Ah, here's the thing. So, I think it was around 2000 and... 12, uh, my old teacher, Master Arms James A. Keating, shout out to Uncle Jim, how are you? Hope everything's well. Uncle Jim was researching into friction blades because I think it was that around about the time when TSA was now stating that any blades under two inches with no lock was actually being permitted for the TSA. Uh, I think, I'm not quite sure how the laws changed afterwards, but I think that's what it was back then. So, I got Uncle Jim a friction folder. I personally didn't put too much into that research back then. Uncle Jim actually did that with a bunch of other folders, including uh, what they call a Texas toothpick. And he had no locks, small folding knife. I think it was under like two inches of blade length. And he was actually experimenting with that particular for practical applications for using what is for everyday carry purpose used for self-defense in worst case scenario when that's the only tool available. So he did that and I jumped on the boat literally way later down the road. So fast forward to 2021 when I got this during the whole crazy still ongoing COVID pandemic. I start researching into, okay, so how would I do this if I was using that? Well, the key thing about this particular copy is one, because of its ring, I could be research going into my pockets and if the person saying, hey man, give me your cash. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 I got this phone. And there's that right here. And what I just would do is I'd use this in a pallad. So, so basically like Olisi pallad manner, like pocket stick. Then from here, after stunning him and using that strike and do whatever I need to, soon as I got enough distance and if the threat still be, I can still get the blade out. And this particular manner from here, I could go into Gunting. So those of you who know Indonesian Silat, that's very easy from here. And I can go insert that into thrust while using this in a very foil-like manner. So that's one easy way of dealing with the situation. He comes in with some sort of an attack right here. From here, I do a good thing, and there's a thrust. My finger's nowhere near the blade, so this is one way of using that in this particular manner. Uh, Brother Jay Fujimoto, on my, one of my friends online on my Facebook, he's a very, very skilled uh, martial artist, uh, training with good old Barton, and he's, Bert, little Burton's got, he's legendary. So Burton Richardson, uh, if you take a look at his teachings, there's tons, but one of the things, he actually posted a video of him uh, giving a short demonstration with Cold Steel Kudu, which is same like matter, but I think they're, I think Jay and uh, little Burton were practicing. I could be butchering this, so bear with me on this one. 
Piper. Piper knife system. So um, it's a, they use their method and edge in reverse grip like so. I think it's very something like that. Distractive and this interesting method. Um, and when I asked Jay question regarding that, because after I saw it, you know, since I got this, I was kind of fascinated. I wanted to see if there's other methods of using it. It's like a manual. You want to read the manual before you start operating a vehicle that you're not familiar with. Same thing for this. So, Jay explained to me that generally this is actually how they were using it in offensive manner. And because the lock of the knife was so weak, they would always, most always grab it like this for thrusting than trying to do any of the other tactics that is normally used. Interesting method. So, definitely sounds like a little rattlesnake. So that's very, very interesting on that. But, while doing statistical search, I also found out that one of my students, shout out to Mike Clevens, Mike, hopefully you're enjoying the South Africa, <laughs> you tell me. So, anyhow, he's sending me a couple of these uh, copies that he'll find the legit ones. So, when I get that, Ray, uh, shout out to my teacher, Raymond Floral, Ray, I'll get those out to you ASAP once they're in, and I'll actually do some work on them before I send it in. Because one of the things that I noticed with the one that I had after this one, the original one, that one of my LE brothers now have. Um, John, how are you? Hope all's well. One of my contact brothers, he currently has that one from me. That thing, I did very minor work on it, but the handle, this is the weirdest that shit. So this is out of a one piece handle, okay? Now this is the fake copies, ladies and gentlemen. The real one is kind of like two wood that's been sandwiched together by epoxy. So it actually kind of has some sharp epoxy sticking out of the damn butt. So I actually had to round that off and stuff on that particular one. So Ray, before I shift those off, I'll actually get some work done on those, okay? I might actually try to get those to Daniel too, get an edge on that because it comes, most of the copies come as a butter knife. It has no edge. So on that particular task, so, Hyper system is like this. Um, I use FMA and Indonesian martial arts sea lot. So you could do good, you could do judos on that one and like gunting. If I go into like contact judos method, you could do like this kind of thing right here. And you can use that blade as that medium instead of your hands. So there's that. And if you practice Kalisi Lustrisi more or floral fighting systems. One of the things that you could definitely pull off is modification of box up in more of a manner of a compact back cut. So from here, you could use it like so. Those of you who don't know what a back cut looks like. Uh, oh yeah. When you do a lot of after action report, you get tons of these annoying paper printouts. So, quite a bit from my old days when I was working in various other capacity as an advisor and consultant. So, because this would be very dangerous due to this having almost no lock. So, and using any advantage that I can, even with the keychain ring, and holding that in a modified foil grip, if I execute that, that's from a single cut. Now this is also with Daniel's edge, okay? Anyone else, I am not quite sure if I'll be able to get the same, same reaction. So if I sit here, you get that cut right here, see? Now, imagine that on somebody's wrist, especially if someone's trying to stab you something, you execute that back cut, but in a box up manner, right here and simply move forward and you get that nice little thrust those of you who say like well you can't thrust like that so borrowing my teacher's words don't judge the word but world by the sh your shetty standard there are people in this world that could do ridiculously crazy and miraculous things and wonders things you just kind of have to be open-minded to it. So I just pulled that shit off with 
typically a knife that Mike tells me you could pick them up in U.S. equivalency would be like something like a couple dollars. <laughs> this is like gas station knife in Africa. I'm like saying, okay, Mike, you need to do a lot of gas station shop and find me some real copies because uh, these fake ones, if the fake ones can do this, imagine what an actual, real, genuine full copy can do. All right, so this is what I carry on me every day due to the fact that one, it's a no lock friction knife that I use for everything. It's my utilitarian knife. Only difference is this thing has a razor sharp Daniel Mali's Epicurean edge that makes this sharper than most blades that uh, even some of my students who have ridiculous amount of blade collections. Once they get a hold of Daniel's edging, they say like, it throws, it puts other edgings to shame. The best edger in the business. In Japan, we call call that profession a togishi because a togishi's business is to polish and polishing is sharpening, and they do a phenomenal. This is like phenomenal. It's like having a Japanese, like what typical everybody says, like a samurai sword in your hands for the edging wise. There you go. So, hopefully that gives you an idea. Uh, reason why carrying a copy. And main reason, another aside from the legality, is also, also actually it is a legality. It's the length. This thing is yeah. You guys gotta start laughing your head off. So this thing, the edge is two point two point seven five. makes it legal for all cities within the neighborhoods that I reside and work at. Alright, there you go. So stay sharp, be safe. Like I said, it's borrowing Uncle Jim's word. Uh, two things. Yeah, I don't want to get you. Uncle Jim has taught me many, many proverbs. <laughs> Some of them we you get. Be trained or be chained is another thing that goes really well with what we do because training alone, if you don't have a correct training, you are gonna get locked up and chained up because you just lost the you won the first to fight, mental and physical, but you lost the legal fight. So definitely always need to have the legal mindset incorporated into your training. Two, uh, Paredes Expel for Midnight, Latin for Skill Banishes Fear. Thank you for watching, stay sharp, be safe, and always remember, do your homework.